I greet everyone in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is no one like him. His name is sweeter than honey. And taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy is the man that takes refuge in you. For the Lord God, he is a sun and a shield. He bestows grace and glory. No good thing he will withhold from them who walk uprightly. I speak blessing upon everyone who is listening to the my voice we're going to pick up from where we left off in philippians chapter 3 we were talking about apostle paul and how he says to put no confidence in the flesh how can a man a super achiever with the most decorated cv telling us to put no confidence in the flesh in that time where he was living he was known as probably the best achiever of all times in in the religious and also in the secular realm. He was a very uh, knowledgeable man. He studied under the feet of Gamaliel. And as far as spirituality of what he considered, that's the word, what he considered to be spiritual, he was top notch. So I'm going to pick up on that verse. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 4, Though I myself have reason for such confidence, that's confidence in the flesh. Now he's going to go ahead and remind us what his achievements were. It says, if someone else thinks he has reason to put confidence in the flesh. So he's telling us, in, he's analyzing with everyone who is uh, reading this. He says, I have more circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law faultless. He is primarily talking about his spiritual accolades. You know, we have to be very careful we have to be very careful when we have our spiritual walk with the Lord that we have a heart of humility and a heart of repentance, a heart of conviction because spiritual pride is something the Lord cannot, cannot stand. Spiritual pride is what kicked Lucifer out of heaven. He said, if I if I'm going to ascend to the heavens. Sometimes we have to ground ourselves. We have to sit before the word of God and ask, where is it that you see that I have gone wrong? Or am I straying away from the walk that you have for me? I'm going to define all these things that Apostle Paul talked about in his curriculum, Vitae. And he says he was circumcised on the eighth day. That is the perfect time that according to Jewish culture, he was not a Gentile convert. He was a Hebrew. He was a Jew, born Jew. And that was expected for him, a male child, to be circumcised on the eighth day. And he says, that's one um, additional notch to my curriculum vitae. And then he says, and of the people of Israel, Israel was the chosen people of God. So every promise that was listed for the children of Israel, he says, that's his. So he says, I'm, I am blessed by God. And then he says of the tribe of Benjamin. What's so special about the tribe of Benjamin? It's the least of all the tribes, but they stood for military valor and they were loyal to the house of David and they were known for their religious devotion. So he's saying, I come from the tribe of Benjamin. And then he says, a Hebrew of the Hebrews. What does that mean? He's in step with the Hebrew teaching, followed and obeyed the laws to the T. So he's like, I know, I know, and I know the law very well, thoroughly. In regard to the uh, law, a Pharisee, a Pharisee. Sometimes we have negative uh, connotations to the word Pharisee. It, there is a lot of negative to it, and it, they were the strictest sect in the Jewish religion. They were zealous for the Torah. They devoted to keep the law in its entirety. 
So they were following it methodically. Uh, not every Pharisee was bad or uh, someone who walked away from God or who, th who thought that they were better than themselves. There were so many Pharisees that Jesus met, Nicodemus, Joseph of Arimathea. They were good Pharisees, people who were uh, soft on the thoughts of God and allowed God to change them. They were an elite group. As for zeal, persecuting the church. You know, Apostle Paul had this idea that he was doing a good thing. You know, you can be zealous for the wrong thing. You have to be careful. What are you zealous for in your life? What is your passion that drives it? I always say the word of God should be your ultimate, ultimate standard. So what happens is when you read what it says in the word of God and the zeal that you have is contrary to what is written in the Bible, you need to get rid of it in your life. Sometimes the zeal is for uh, certain things of the world, certain things that the world is promoting. What does the word of God say? And that's what it says. He wanted to stamp out Christianity. He wanted to stamp out this new, the way that was happening, the way movement asked for righteousness based on the law of faultless. He's not saying he's not without sin, but he offered the proper sacrifices that was written for him to follow, and he lived by the purity of the law. So he's saying, I have all these things, and it's impressive credentials. He could have based his confidence on his race, his religion, reputation, rituals, and roles. But he realized something. He had an encounter with God. He had encounter with the risen Savior. So what happened on the road to Damascus? He is on his way to persecute the church, the body of Christ. And he was apprehended on the road of Damascus. He was riding on the laurels. And he was riding on the laurels of his accolades. And the risen Christ met him. And what happened? He was struck blind. And he groped on the ground. And he needed assistance. And then the, and Jesus asked him this question. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he says, who are you, Lord? He was zealous for the wrong reason. But when he heard the truth, he said, who are you, Lord? Who are you, Lord? The risen Christ, he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Oh, that we would evaluate ourselves when Jesus asks us, and calls you by name and says, I need for you to do this. I need for you to change. I need for you to let go of unforgiveness in your heart. I need for you to become more like me. What is your answer? Will it be yes, Lord? And we see that Apostle Paul found a better way. He saw something that was so lacking in his life, so much of emptiness even though he had all these credentials it was nothing it was nothing when he met the risen Christ he could not gain salvation he could not what he was trying to do was earn his way towards God salvation is a free gift it's a free gift for everyone whoever wants to come to him must receive it by faith knowing that it's a free gift. You cannot earn it. And what he realized was salvation was not by ritual. It was not because of his circumcision. Salvation was not by his race because he was a people of Israel. Salvation was not by rank because he was from the tribe of Benjamin. Salvation was not by tradition. He was Hebrew of the Hebrews. Salvation was not by religion in regard to the law of Pharisee. Salvation was not by zeal. He was a persecutor of the church. Salvation was not by legalistic righteousness. He said, According to the law, he was faultless. According to the world standard, he was 100% out of 100%. But when he got closer to the Lord 
and he experienced the gift of salvation, he saw that he was nothing, a big zero when God appraised him. When God appraises all of us, where do we stand? Where do we stand? Don't fall into the legalistic trap of how certain things or certain people told us this is how we need to approach God. No. Come as you are. Come as you are, empty, and read the Word of God with an open mind and ask the Lord, Lord, change me from the inside out. Because when you get a glimpse of who He is, nothing in this world will matter. I'm going to give you this example. One time I had an opportunity to teach or to give a short message to a young group of kids. And I was talking about purity. And what happened is I held out a couple of sheets of white um, sheets of paper. And I said, what color is this? And they said, white. And then I held out another one, which was even more white or more pure white than the previous one. They said, what color is this pure white? And then I had the standard of ultimate purity of white. And I held it up with the other shades. And I said, what color is this? They said, white. But as they saw the shades of white, getting more pure and pure, they realized that the first one was not truly white in color. So that is what I want to share with you. God is the ultimate standard. God's standard is tried and true. Do not compare yourself with any other thing except the Word of God. The Word of God is your standard. It shows you how to walk in purity. It shows how to come to God. It talks about your relationships. It talks about uh, sanctification, where you need to be. It talks about eternity. It talks about your new way of living. God's Word is your ultimate standard, not anyone else. There are people who can give you resources. Pastors are resources. Friends are resources. Your parents are resources. But God is the source. He is the ultimate source. And he left this love book for us to read. It is by reading this word that your mind gets transformed. It is the washing of your mind that Creates you, to, creates you to be a new creation in Christ. Apostle Paul had all these accolades, but when he came to the true standard, the true standard, which is Jesus Christ, he said, I am nothing. I have all the reason to have confidence, but when he met the risen Christ, he said, I'm nothing. And then in verse uh, 7, it says, Whatever, but whatever gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Let's put down our spiritual accolades. If there's any spiritual pride in our life, thinking that we have read the Bible X number of times, we speak in tongues, we do all of those things, it's all good. It's all good. But when God appraises you, where do you stand? The Holy Spirit is speaking to some of y'all. Let the Holy Spirit's refining fire cleanse and purify us because we represent Him. And let everything that is of the world and of the flesh be taken out in the name of Jesus. That we have a higher walk with Him and we walk in knowing that Jesus Christ is our only standard by where we live. I pray that this week will be a blessed week and you will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Hope to see you soon next week. God bless.